I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust you are enjoying the new paradigm in drbill.tv, which is, of course, the fact that I can switch cameras on you. <laughs> Get a slightly different perspective of the studio here and maybe see Tux and the Angry Birds just a little better. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But I had to keep cutting my eyes over here, so I might as well cut over to the camera that's looking straight at me. <laughs> and remind you once again that we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. And of course, we are still Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon, even though we are now emphasizing drbill.tv because I am indeed <laughs> a computer curmudgeon. Yes. So let's get right into the news of the week. It's going to be a bit a bit of an abbreviated show today because there wasn't a lot going on this week just saying okay but we do have a few things not the least of which is a major upgrade to the GIMP is out we're uh, we've been running GIMP 2.6 for a while GIMP, GIMP 2.8 is out now GIMP of course stands for graphical image manipulation program. I had to think about it. <sighs> but anyway, it's not a guy with a bad leg. Okay? Not house. No. It is the GIMP. And by the way, uh, the GIMP is the way most, you know, tech savvy folk refer to it as opposed to just GIMP. Although, eh, either way works as long as you understand that it's graphical image manipulation program. Yes. Um, also, I said graphical image manipulation. That's technically wrong. I'm sorry. It's GNU. <laughs> GNU. GNU's not Unix. G-N-U. That's one of those, you know, uh, what do they call it? Where it's recycling itself? <laughs> I don't remember now. I just said it last week. Oh well. Anyway, it won't come to me. Perhaps the dude who likes to comment on these netcasts on the screen will refresh my memory. Recursive! Yes, that's it. Recursive. I knew it would eventually come to me. By the way, the Game Master last week said that the dude that discusses things on the screen while I'm talking should have a name. And his name will be Fred. P-H-R-E-D, Fred. Because why not? Anyway, he likes to make sarcastic comments about me as I ramble on, as I'm doing now. So, uh, anyway, the thing about the GIMP is, the GIMP is now a later version, a mature, more mature version, and there's a whole lot of people talking about the fact that the screens are now integrated into one screen. Thing is, when I downloaded it and set it up, the screens were all still separate. So I think that's just an option that somebody set up and is not necessarily the way it typically runs. The biggest thing that I saw is that the text part of it, where you can insert text into your, uh, into your imagery, uh, is different. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you go to the uh, graphic that I had here earlier, you see here where it has techpodcast.com, that was created with the new GIMP. Yes. And that is a good illustration of how you can use the GIMP to create interesting things that are very useful, like lower thirds on netcasts. <laughs> yes. So anyway... Next item, Facebook is going to have an app store. Well, apparently it already has an app store. 
doesn't everybody have an app store now? I mean, you know, Google has an app store, and Apple, of course, has an app store for their iPod and so forth. I mean, everybody seems to have an app store. Of course, Android. Android has an app store. Anyway, point is, Facebook now has an app store. Is this a good thing? That's what I want to know. Because most of the Facebook apps that I see out there, eh, I'm not that interested in. Just saying, that's just me. But anyway, uh, you know, there's 900 million people that use Facebook. That's a whole lot of folks. So I'm sure there were people out there who will be interested in a Facebook app store. I personally, I'm just not. Just saying. So, here's one that I am really excited about, and that is PowerPress 4.0. PowerPress 4.0. I accidentally launched the GIMP. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> ah, that's silly. I hit the wrong button and it launched the GIMP. Let me just close it out. Why do I do these things? Anyway. So, but, what was I going to say? PowerPress 4.0. That's what I was going to say. PowerPress 4.0 is the latest version of the WordPress plugin designed by Blueberry, B L U B R R Y, Blueberry.com, uh, and all the folks at Raw Voice who have created PowerPress. And I have switched all of my blogs that use netcasting, like the Handheld Hack and Vertzine and the Word of Faith Ministry site and the Dr. Bill site all over to WordPress. Took me a while to do that, but I got it all done. And now 4.0 is even bigger and better in terms of what it allows you to do. One of the neatest new features is, I'm going to cut back over here, is the, <laughs> I have to remember to cut my camera as I swivel around different places. I have a swivel chair. Make sure to do the Numa Numa song. Yeah, anyway. anyway, um, so they have a new feature, and I can't remember what it's called. Let's see. They have a feed maximizer. They've updated the iTunes stuff. Uh, you know. I should really, you know, like, prepare for these netcasts before I go on, but I don't. I just kind of do them, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let me click on the blog. Metamarks. <laughs> Metamarks. You can add additional meta information to your media. In other words, within this netcast, I could add a metamark, and it would pop up on the screen and allow you to see certain information, whether it was an image or whatever. So that's kind of handy. That's a new feature. Actually it came out in 3.0.1 but it's now in 4.0 as well. So uh, PowerPress 4.0, I announced this, I said it's coming soon uh, based on the press release that they put out but it hadn't quite made it into uh, the update stream for WordPress for your blog but it has now done so as of this morning as I record this. So you can now click on the update automatically within your WordPress blog and you will get the new version of PowerPress. Dude. So, uh, by the way, Todd Cochran, the CEO of Raw Voice, says, I am proud of this release of PowerPress in supporting the latest iTunes podcast specs. Additionally, this update introduces innovative features first to market for the tens of thousands of media creators that rely on PowerPress, said Todd Cochran, CEO of Raw Voice. Dude. So, cool stuff. Now, also, whoa! We have Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is... AM Deadlinks. It sounds kind of like, like a bad comic book. You know, AM Deadlinks. But it's not. <laughs> It is all about finding dead URLs, universal resource locators, in your bookmarks. 
So you can use this, and it's actually quite cool to be able to use this on all your various major browsers, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Opera, Chrome, all the various major browsers, and you can go in and have it look, check out all your bookmarks and see if they're still valid links. If they're not valid links, it will tell you and you can delete them because, you know, the Internet is constantly changing, constantly things are going away, and why have a link to something that's just not there? It can be very frustrating. So, just saying, you need to check it out, clean things up, kind of like spring cleaning for your browser. Also, it will refresh your fave icons. Now, Chrome does this kind of better than most browsers, kind of automatically updates those fave icons as they change. But some things like Internet Explorer, dude, it just never seems to want to update the fave icons. So, it has the ability to go out and refresh those fave icons and get the later, greater versions, if you know what I mean. So that's kind of cool, yeah. So anyway, you know, I said that this was going to be a very short netcast, and indeed it has been. It's actually shorter than I planned on. There's just not a lot going on, you know what I'm saying? Now, I've got some other netcasts to do, like Bertzine and Handheld Hack and so forth, so watch those for new things. Yes. And, of course, I'm still playing with the whole uh, tool, dual camera thing. You know what I just did? <laughs> I just switched cameras and was totally wrong. I was looking at the wrong camera. See, they both have little blue lights. So the only way I can know whether they're switched to them is to look at the screen there and see which one it's on. So, of course, I had this camera on that one and I was looking at this one and then a while ago I had this camera on and I was looking at that one <laughs> the confused camera edition <laughs> of the Dr. Bill show apparently yes so anyway however you gotta admit the sound sounds awesome with the new headset. Actually, it's not such a new headset. It's just a headset that I'm using with the new VidBlaster software. Yes. So, by the way, I will mention, I was quite serious about the fact that if you would like to send me some moolah, some money, uh, so that I can actually buy the VidBlaster software and get rid of the uh, thing up here in the corner that says VidBlaster, which I don't mind having there. You know, I don't mind advertising VidBlaster for folks. But, you know, also want to pay for the software. So if you want to help out the old doctor, I'd appreciate it. Yes. And so, like I said, it's a short netcast, but hey. Join us next time. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.